Holy Spirit this morning. There have been some questions going up, some things you've been questioning. This may not be for everybody, but there's a few people here. The Lord just won't let it go. Say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, Lord, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And the Lord says this. He says, there is meat in my house. (laughs) There is meat in this house. And whoever will come and partake of what the Lord sets before us, it's good. It's good for the eating. It's good for your growth spiritually. But stop asking, the Lord says, stop asking, where's the meat? The Lord says, the meat is here. The meat is here. There is meat in my house. There is meat. Sometimes, you know, we, well, Lord, we want dessert. (laughs) We want our ears to be itched, scratched. We want a fluffy, comfortable message. But the Lord says, if you want to grow, you have to have the meat. And he said, desire the meat of the word. It's okay to have the milk, but we should move beyond the milk into the meat. And there's some effort involved in chewing the meat. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I'd go there if there was some solid teaching, if there was some meat. The Lord says there's meat here. There's meat here for whoever would receive it. Come up to the table and partake and put some effort into it and take that meat of the word and begin to chew it. Begin to meditate on the word day and night. Begin to take that as your as your life source. You have to take, partake of what the Lord has served you today. Amen. A little bit of correction here, I feel like, from the Holy Spirit. He said, there is meat, and there's even strong meat, and there will be more where that came from. Amen? Hallelujah. Say amen or oh me. (laughs) How many believe that we're going up? We're growing up. We've desired and we've had the milk. And as newborn babies, we're instructed to take that milk and to feed on that milk. But babies grow up. Amen? Babies begin to eat solid food. And then they learn to feed themselves, much to their mother's dismay. (laughs) And they may make a mess. I mean, been there. I made a mess. I was a baby Christian. I made some messes. But for His grace and mercy, amen? Just like a mom would instruct, no, honey, don't do that. We don't do that. We don't, we don't eat that way. We don't, we don't play with our food. I think there's too many people been playing with the food that God's given them to eat. But it's time to eat. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. And I just want to say this as well. If you're waiting for pastor to spoon feed you everything for you to grow and develop spiritually, it's not going to happen. You have been called as a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has equipped you. He has given you everything that you have need of. He said, come up to this table and receive that meat, that milk, that sustaining word of His truth, that you would live by it, grow by it, and be established in the truth. Amen? I don't know about you, but I want to grow. I want to develop greater than I am developed right now. I want to grow in a greater way in God. Yes, we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but how many know that there's more than that for us to receive? He said, all the kingdom has now been given unto us, and we are to receive this kingdom which cannot be shaken. And we're to pray, Lord, your kingdom come here on the earth in my life as it is in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Or oh me. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Bob. Glory to God. Well, I received that word. 
Hallelujah. We were blessed to be able to go up to Midland, Odessa this weekend, and um, I was able to partake of a steak <laughs> at Texas Roadhouse. And uh, it was everything and more <laughs> than what I was expecting. But you know what? The scriptures say, taste and see that the, that the Lord is good. I was served this, this delicious meal and it was right there. It was hot and ready. It was fresh. It was ready to be devoured. <laughs> or if you're like Shatil, ladies, you know, if, if you're not a meat eater, then the country vegetable plate that was delivered to her. <laughs> Can't leave you out. <laughs> She partook. We have to partake of some things. There's there's some choices involved. Amen? If you want to go to the next level, I'm remembering back to Pastor Mark's uh, message on Baptism Sunday when I myself went under the water and was washed. Amen? And a fresh start, new start, new beginning. But he was ministering on, if you want to grow, there's a, there's a next level of accountability. And accountability is not a bad word, and submission to authority is not a bad word. Amen? Uh, we are submitted to our Heavenly Father, and then we're submitted to those that He's put in our life, that we're to be accountable to one another as believers, that we're to be accountable to the spiritual authority and the offices that God has put within our life, if that's the pastor, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, the apostle, uh, the person that God puts in your life as an overseer over you in your life. You have some accountability there. Amen. There's protection and accountability. If you have some crazy thought and you're not sure if this is scriptural or not, you can come to pastor and say, Pastor, I had this thought. It seems a little far out. I heard this message and I just want you to bring me back to the roots of the foundation because there's an office and an anointing on our pastor and a teaching anointing on our pastor that we can come and we can have accountability to our pastor. Amen. And say, hey, help me. I need help. Jeremiah says that we were given shepherds after God's own heart that we would be fed knowledge and understanding. There's some things that we need to know and then we don't just need to know information but we need to have revelation by the Holy Spirit that we would understand it, that we would be able to perceive what we have learned, that we would be able to walk according to the truth that we've received. Yes. Amen. We have to have the light of revelation in our life. So accountability is not a bad thing. In fact, accountability in the house of God is a one plus one equals two. It's a basic of serving God. We're accountable to God and then we're accountable to those that He's put in our life and entrusted us to uh, our lives unto. The scriptures say that Pastor Mark will give an, uh, he will give an account for those that he's been entrusted with. The souls that he's been entrusted with. That I'll give an account for the souls that God's entrusted me with. God will keep an account of the souls, the people that He's put in your life to disciple, to be a minister of the light of the gospel of the truth of Jesus Christ. There's an accountability here. Amen. He said, pray ye one for another that you would be healed. If you don't have ye one another in your life, who are you going to call that you would pray ye one for another that you would be healed? Aren't you glad we're growing together? Amen. Amen. And where God has called you to be, until He has said otherwise, stay where He's called you to be. Amen. See, transition is a, a time where most Christians, most believers, uh, they can get off because in transition you may seem like a season is coming to a close and a new season is beginning, but until the Lord has led you out, you stay where He's put you in. Amen? I always go back to what was the last thing the Lord told me to do? Where was the last place the Lord told me to be? What was the last message that He has me on repeat over and over and over and over again? You ever had that happen? The Lord has you on repeat? You listen to a message or you're in a service, the Lord instructs you to uh, pull up that podcast, download that, get that CD, whatever way you need to get it. But then he says, now listen to it. Well, Lord, I was there in the service. I heard it the first time. 
But you can catch things the first time, but not really hear the depth of what the Lord is trying to convey to you. He's trying to give you some meat, amen? <laughs> There's some things that He wants to reveal to you. So have me listen to it again. And listen to it again. Okay, Lord, this is the third time. Again. But Lord, I already heard again. And then on the fifth, sixth, maybe even seventh time, I'll get what I needed to receive that I hadn't seen yet. Amen. What was the last word the Lord had given you? Maybe it was hold steady or maybe it was move forward. Maybe it was repair the waste places and bring revival to the things that look dead. Whatever the Lord last instructed you to do, He will not move you forward beyond His last instruction until you hear, heed, and obey what He's told you to do. Wow. Wow. Amen. Where do you need to be? Sometimes we come. Our answers would be so much easier to receive instead of coming after uh, uh, someone else to tell us what to do. What, what did the Lord last tell you to do? Oh. Well, he last told me to read John chapter 3. And he hasn't said otherwise, so I'm still reading John chapter 3. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of revelation in, in just one verse of Scripture because God breathed life into that verse. And if you think you've gotten it yet, and he's still having you read it over and over, and he's camped you out there, you haven't gotten it yet. Can I help you out? <laughs> you haven't gotten it yet, but he is merciful. He's our teacher. He's showing us what we need. And we may not even understand why we are in John chapter 3, still in one verse in John chapter 3. But the Lord has something that he is preparing you in advance for that is up ahead. You, you understand this, that God is. He it has been from the beginning and He will be to the end. He is. He has no beginning, He has no end. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. He needs everything in between. He is. Hebrews 11.6 says that we must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. As I seek Him, He will give me what I need to know when I need to know it. As I seek Him, He will have me where I need to be with what I need to have. Isn't that good news? Amen. This is good news this morning. Amen. And if you know that you've been delaying obedience, which is disobedience, this is a good in informational message today that you would find hope and repent and say, Lord, I repent for not obeying, but I, I, here I am. Use me, Lord. Here I am. Help me to do what you've called me to do. Help me to be who you've made me to be. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Help me anybody Amen. today. <laughs> there's, there's some accountability in the house of God. There's some uh, strong meat in the house of God. And I, I like this. I was remembering this talking with Shatil this week. When I went to Rama Bible Training College in Samoa, there was a dear lady. She worked in the office. She'd gone through the school herself. She was working in the office. And my sister and I were there uh, fresh from me graduating homeschooling and never having been away from home besides some short-term mission trips to going halfway around the world over to Western Samoa with my sister. Thankfully, she was with me. Uh, but still, we were pretty much alone, didn't know anybody at the school, hadn't known anyone beforehand, didn't know any of the ministry directors. Just, you know, God just, bloop, bloop, <laughs> drop you in a place, <laughs> and you're there. And I remember she said this to me. She said, you know, Samoa is what you make it to be. And sometimes, you know, I was thinking about this week because uh, sometimes we can get so caught up in what we don't have or what we don't see or what we would love things to be or how the reality is that we wish it could be that we don't just say, Lord, I'm going to enjoy where I am right now in this walk, in this journey. I'm going to take a breath and look around and, and I'm going to hear the birds singing in the trees and I'm going to feel the breeze, the cool breeze blowing, the wind blowing. I'm going to look at your beautiful creation. I'm going to enjoy where I'm at. I'm going to enjoy this day today. Because it is what I make it today. And you need to realize that today is the only day that you're alive. Today. 
Tomorrow's promised to no man. But today, while it's today, encourage one another. While it's today, do what the Lord's called you to do while it's today. Amen. Let His joy invade your life today. Well, maybe one day I'll be happy. One day I'll be happy when I get the house, when I get the car, when my relationships are better, when all the situations are are all improved. No, how about you receive His joy today and enjoy this day that He's given you to be alive today. Amen. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean that you stop hoping for the future or you don't have your faith turned on for what's ahead. But I'm going to enjoy today whether I get the car today or not. Yes. Amen. You can still enjoy your day if you have a flat tire, you have a, a relational problem, you have a financial problem. Why? Because His peace has been made available to me. His joy has been made available to me. And I don't have to be moved by circumstances or things that may happen to me on the outside because on the inside, I have the Spirit of the living God. I have His peace, His joy, His nature, and I can count it all joy and let his patience have its perfect work in me have you ever had a day where you said oh me (laughs) haven't we all had those days those opportunities to get down or to get fretful or to begin to worry and let things steal our peace and our joy but we can say Lord I count this all joy let your joy be within me to the overflow may I be a light in the darkness that even though everyone around me knows nothing is going my way in the natural today Lord I know my name is written in the Lamb's book of life I know how great a price you paid for my salvation I know that you've received me into your family I know that I am called by you my name is in your your lips are speaking my name you're singing over me Lord I am just receiving your joy No matter the circumstances, no matter the attacks, no matter the waves that are coming my way, by your Spirit I can pick up a surfboard and begin to surf the waves. Hallelujah. I can begin to use what the devil meant to destroy me. Lord, I'll take that and turn it for your good. Amen. You need to learn to surf through life. A surfer knows you have to be able to read the waves. The waves have to be there for a surfer to be able to catch the wave. And then you have to yield and learn to flow and read the wave. Amen. You can enjoy your life even with the worst attacks from the enemy. His peace you have received. And this is the best part. He does not take it away. It's a supernatural deposit. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. The fruit of the Spirit. One of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit work in me so much that I can keep this flesh-filled, doubt-filled, worry-filled, fear-filled mouth shut. (laughs) Self-control. I can go to Golden Corral. (laughs) Oh, it got quiet. (laughs) I can go to Golden Corral and not think I'm going to eat myself sick. (laughs) I'm going to make myself miserable. (laughs) I'm going to partake of everything. (laughs) No, you can go and you can partake And you can enjoy what you're partaking. See, this is a lie of the enemy that you have to have quantity to have enjoyment in your life. But God says you can have quality and have enjoyment in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been blessed with an amazing wife. A woman uh, of quality. A woman of a household of faith. And I don't have to be looking for any other woman because I have the woman that God has given for me. 
the woman that I entered into covenant of marriage before God and before our family and before our friends and we said we do. I made promises in covenant to keep to my wife. I don't need quantity of women. <laughs> so, look how that worked out for Solomon, okay? <laughs> In the Old Testament. <laughs> but I have quality. Amen. And my marriage is a garden. And what I sow into my marriage, I will reap from my marriage. If I will sow quality time and sow quality appreciation and sow love and, and gifts and acts of service, you have to know your, your spouse's love languages. <laughs> As mine's gifts and Shatil likes gifts, but she'd rather spend two hours staring at my face. <laughs> Just being together. Being together. Romance should not be dead in our marriages. Amen. You should not stop dating your wife, men. <laughs> Keep things alive. Rekindle the flame. Uh, those, those coals may be down to embers, but you can, you can bring some new air and new life to your relationship. Just because it's another day I get to spend with you is why I got you flowers. Not because it's Valentine's Day, not because it's an uh, anniversary, but to celebrate every day with one another. I can feel the romance swooning. <laughs> but quality time is a love language my wife has. So I have to know that so I can... I can do what I need to do. I can be present and not just be in the flesh present, but mentally checked out. Amen, women. That was a good chance. To... Amen. Yes. Amen. amen. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, when she goes out of her way to take care of you and prepare a favorite meal or make sure you have socks and underwear and, and <laughs> take care of the kids and the different seasons of life that we may be in. If she's making an effort to, to sow into the garden of your marriage relationship, then acknowledge and say thank you and love and tenderness and kiss on the cheek or kiss on the lips. But be there. Being present. Amen. Because this is our quality. Not quantity, but this is our quality relationship that is precious, that is to be treasured, that is to be honored, that is to be protected. Men, protect your wives. The scriptures talking about your wife being as a weaker vessel is not saying that she is less than, but that she is, as the Amplified says it, like a prized, precious, treasured family heirloom, one that you would go to great measures to protect, to preserve. If there's hardness, if there's gruffness, that's what we're built for. And an amen. <laughs> the protector. You don't send your wife down the stairs at 3 a.m. because there's a noise. No, you get up and you investigate with Smith & Wesson, okay? <laughs> no, honey, you go. <laughs> Where did all that come from, eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we need one another. And where I may have blind spots, she sees for me. And where she may have blind spots, I see for her. The scriptures say in Ecclesiastes that two are better than one. Yes. Think about this. God created Adam in perfection in the garden. And God himself said, it is not good. He made all these things. He all of creation said, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is good. And he saw Adam by himself and said, this is not good. 
Amen. <laughs> this is not good. The first thing that God said was not good was man being alone. So God said, I'm going to make a helpmeet, a helper, one combat compatible with Adam to be a blessing to him and that Adam could be a blessing to her. And it's amazing. God formed Adam out of the dirt, out of the dust of the ground. But he formed Eve from the rib. Close to the heart of flesh and bone and blood. Tender. Isn't that awesome? See why we're supposed to protect and to preserve? Because it comes from the heart of the closeness, the God wants you close-knit. He wants you quality, have a quality marriage. And if you've stopped dating, you've stopped dating your spouse, you've stopped investing in your marriage, you've stopped doing the first works, it's time to brush up on those things and invite, take, tell your wife, hey, we have plans on Friday night. We do? Yes, we have plans on Friday night. Preparation time is never wasted time, men. <laughs> Making reservations, getting the, the favorite treat, if it's chocolate or flowers or whatever it is, could be beef jerky, who knows? You know, <laughs> could be basketball game tickets, could be football game tickets. We're all made unique, amen? <laughs> so whatever it is, but prepare in advance, not just, well, we're going to have a day. Prepare your heart. Prepare for things that you've been wanting to ask and things you've been wanting to share and taking that time to prepare in advance. Taking the time to swing by the restaurant beforehand and have them set the table. With, see, the romance is just you know, swooning in here. <laughs> I see the wives giving their husbands looks like... <laughs> but preparation time. If you're single, God will take this time to prepare you for being married. If you will take the time to, to uh, prepare yourself instead of looking for the right one, how about you become the right one? Prepare the vessel beforehand. So that if God brings Mrs. Wright into your life, that you're not still riding training wheels. <laughs> You haven't heard of deodorant or uh, mouthwash or hair gel or <laughs> clothing. <laughs> Preparation time is never wasted time. Because <laughs> if you look good, but you stink. <laughs> Sometimes I've come in the house and Shatil go, stay over there <laughs> until you go shower. <laughs> See, we were made from dirt. We're closer to dirt. We get dirty, it just happens. I can go outside and dirt just onto me. It just happens automatically. Our boys, you don't have to give them any time. They're picking up rocks. They're digging in dirt. doesn't matter what they're wearing, where they are. They are just, they're into the dirt. So it takes little effort for us to get clean. But there is a reward. And see, it's not a, not a sexual reward. You know, I believe that God has blessed the marriage relationship covenant, the sex, you know, sexual relationship, of course, to establish the covenant and for procreation, for the, the blessing of the family. But intimacy is not just sex. Intimacy is a sharing of heart. It's an opening of oneself to another without fear, one-to-one, -one, heart to heart, intimacy, sharing of dreams, hopes, visions, allowing God to heal things in you. Intimacy is not uh, just a sexual uh, uh, experience. Ex intimacy is actually very spiritual. Intimacy is a heart open one to another. Intimacy. See, the world's trying to sell that it's just sex and quantity of sex and sex, sex, sex. Yes, I said it in church. <laughs> we should be talking about it because the world is screaming it and reaping an entire generation. 
But you know what? But that's a lie because sex does not equal intimacy. A relationship built on a covenant of I will stand beside you whether we have finances, whether we have health or sickness, whether we have it all or we have nothing. As long as I have you, baby, <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> We're going to make it. The Lord said, though you may go through the fire and though you may go through the flood, He will be with you. And you'll come out not even wet and not even smelling like smoke. I believe that's a great marriage verse. <laughs> we may go through some floods. We may go through some fires. We may go through some fiery darts of the enemy. But as long as we remember who we are in covenant with, because it's a threefold cord. It is a husband and a wife and Almighty God. He is involved in this covenant relationship. Marriage is His idea. He is the one that said, man shall leave his, his mother and father and be joined and be Become one flesh with his wife. He said, leave and cleave. That's why we have so many problems today in America because we don't have, the, we have the cleaving without the leaving. <laughs> because God wants to establish this new covenant family household apart from influence of mom and dad on either side. And let God be the one looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If marriage is His idea, then His blessing is upon the marriage and His, uh, all that He has for you is available in that marriage. Right. Amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing that the Scriptures in the New Testament tell husbands, not take care of your wife, not protect your wife, because that's just automatic. We have that built into it. He said, love your wife. That means that there will be opportunities when she is unlovable <laughs> that you have to love your wife. <laughs> and ladies, the, the verse that is given, it's in the Scriptures. It's not my idea. It's not my plan. But the, the Scriptures record that the Lord said that wives submit unto your own husband. Notice it doesn't say women submit to men. Because in the kingdom, these, there's neither male nor female, nor Jew nor Greek. It's not about nationality. It's not about citizenship. It's not even about gender. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Amen? But the scriptures say, husbands, love your wives. And even if you have to give up everything to take care, just as Christ gave himself for the church, you husbands give yourself for your wife. That goes back to that 3 a.m. creepy noise. <laughs> I'm a sacrifice. <laughs> a willing and available shield to protect what is most precious and most valuable to me. Amen. And then said to the, to the wife, wife, submit unto your own husband. There will be a time where this will be a challenge. Wives, to submit to your own husband. Because you may think, I know better. I have all the emotional IQ of the marriage and the relationship. And I understand all the behind the scenes. But if God has spoken to your husband and given him a word for you as a, as a couple and as a family. And he said, stay when you think we need to leave. <laughs> what does the word say? Wives, submit to your own husband. And you can pray to the Father if your husband needs revelation, needs insight, needs, needs some help. You can pray and ask and that you would receive. And God is the one that can turn his heart. Amen. Amen. And men, you may think, well, she's not very lovely. She hasn't been very lovely. I don't want to love her. But the Lord says... Husband, love your wife. It's an instruction. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. Love your wife. Amen. As Christ loved the church, counted the church greater than his own physical body. Husbands, love your wives. Well, 
I, I've really been planning this fishing trip for a long time. <laughs> I've been saving money for this fishing trip. <laughs> I've arranged schedules for this fishing trip. <laughs> But my sweetheart <laughs> wants to do something else <laughs> on this weekend <laughs> and wants us to take the kids <laughs> over to the aquarium <laughs> where I have to be taunted by fish <laughs> that I can't catch. <laughs> But just remember, you already caught the one <laughs> that matters the most. See, I went on a fishing trip with the family, and uh, I found my wife. <laughs> so fishing trips are, are special to me. <laughs> but see, I was, I was taught this and instructed this from the Word by men of God that I respect and honor and some that are in heaven today. And he said, if it comes down to the last two pieces of bacon, and one's a little more burnt than the other. Now, you may like burnt bacon. I don't know. It depends on how you grew up and how it was cooked. But you give her the best. You prefer her as most precious, my treasure. Amen. Amen. If it's the better pillow, <laughs> the better parking spot, amen. The better meal. <laughs> she may not have ordered fries, but just be aware your fries are open season. <laughs> Anything you order is going to look better. <laughs> See, sometimes we're so spiritually minded that we forget that we're human beings living on planet Earth, dealing with human beings, and the scriptures speak to it all. The Word is the foundation for our life. And the Holy Spirit will illuminate and breathe life into the Word to help us. And I don't know about you men, but I need help to love my wife. I do. And when I come to that place of humility to say, Lord, I need your help. I want your help. He said, there's more grace to the humble. Because you know what? My daddy, he, he may not have been a perfect picture. Maybe I didn't ha maybe you didn't have a dad as a as what a husband should be or even what a father should be. The scriptures talk about for for hus for for men that you love your children that you don't provoke them to wrath, to anger, that you're merciful, you show the father God's heart. He's full of grace, he's full of mercy, he's full of compassion. He's ever ready to encourage, to exhort, yes to correct because he loves us. He sees the outcome on the other side of the correction. He does it in love because of love. He loves you. He doesn't, he can't let you stay the same as a spoiled little brat. I was a spoiled little brat. When God called me to grow, you know who he sent into my life? Men that would hold me accountable to the word. He sent people into my life to say, you're a man of God. You don't, you don't get the ability. You don't get the... <laughs> you don't get that option. Amen? Amen? You don't get that option. I didn't get that option. You don't get that option. What did the Lord tell you to do? Love your wife. If you love your wife, you're not going to be running around on your wife. If you love your wife, you're not going to be speaking evil of your wife. If you love your wife, you're going to protect and preserve and love and keep and cherish and hold dear your wife. Amen. Amen. It's not going to happen automatically. We found this out after the honeymoon. Back to reality. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> it took me a good six weeks to get used to sleeping in bed with someone else. <laughs> 
always taking the covers. <laughs> See, there's things that naturally we have to work through together, but recognize this. God is on your side. He is for you, not against you. He's for your marriage. He's for this relationship. He wants it to be heaven on earth. Our marriages should be a testimony and a witness to the grace and mercy and love of God. Amen. And no matter where you are right now, no matter how your relationships are, God's touch can make things better. You, you have to come to that place, men, where I, came, I can't do everything. I don't know everything. Lord, I just humble myself before you and I say, help me, Jesus. And he poured his grace. He poured knowledge into me. He gave people in my life that I could confide in and look to. Mar other married couples, been married 50, 60 years, 70 years. If you want to have a thriving, healthy, successful marriage, get around thriving, healthy, successful marriages. Amen. Amen? It matters who you listen to. It matters what you see. We have to have those in our life that we are looking unto and say, I just, I love that relationship blessed with some couples back in Florida that were part of the church I was in growing up. And they would just dote on each other. I mean, they're in their 80s, and they're more in love now, I, I believe, than back when they got married. What a testimony. Never an unkind word. I saw patience and mercy during Thanksgiving situations. <laughs> Christmas situations, <laughs> decorating situations, <laughs> church situations. What nobility. What a place of honor. We should be giving those around us something to look up to for the, for the younger generation. And then we, wherever we are, should be looking to those beyond us to see where we can grow. Amen? The scriptures talk to men and women uh, if, if you're older, it, it, the scriptures talk about what you're to do. You're to bring the younger in and instruct them in natural things that will help them not make mistakes and fall into the, the attacks of the enemy. It's all right here. <laughs> Amen? Well, I didn't know we were going to have a marriage refresher this morning, but <laughs> if you're not married yet, just I'll, re I'll cap, recap. If you're not married yet, let the Lord work on you becoming who you need to be to be a blessing to your future spouse. And if you are married, ask for God's help to help you make your marriage everything that he desires for it to be here on earth as a testimony and as a witness to all, everyone in the church and believers and even in the world. And if the simplest prayer that you can pray is all you can pray, He will answer it if you say, Jesus, help me. Help my marriage. Help my family. Help me to do what I need to do. I'm done casting blame. I'm done, I'm done hiding in shame. Lord, help me be who I'm supposed to be, that I would be a shining light of what you've done in me by your mercy and your grace. Amen. The simplest but most powerful prayer we can pray is, Lord, help me. And he said, when we humble ourselves, he, by his grace, will come and invade our circumstances and situations. And he said, there's more grace to the humble than to say, oh, I've got it. I'm good. Lord, I, I, I'll figure it out. wrong <laughs> Have I recovered from the fishing thing? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Lord, help me. Lord, help me. You will be amazed at heaven's response to a humble heart open to heaven's help. Amen. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this word today. Lord, I thank you for strengthening our families, strengthening marriages. 
strengthening us as individuals to be all that you've called us to be. Father, where we are weak, you said that by your grace, your strength is made manifest in our life to those around us and those in the world. And that we could come boldly and ask for help and mercy in time of need. So, Father, for all those that are under the sound of my voice, if any of this message resonate with their heart, you're there standing, knocking at the door of their heart to say, this is for you. You weren't here by accident. You were here by my divine plan to get you here, to hear these words that you would receive what you need. You say, well, I wasn't even going to come today. I've never been here before. I've heard a lot of things about this place. But the Lord brought you here. And he has things and spoken words that will change your life if you will take them, receive them, and do them. So, Father, I thank you that you empower them to do the word that they've just heard. That they receive it with meekness, with humility. And that where you say to change, they'll change. And where you tell them to grow, that they'll grow. And whatever they need to cut out, Lord, that you would help them to cut those things out. Lord, we thank you for it. May we be a greater witness for you and for your kingdom here on the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Say it with me. Amen.